we begin with breaking COVID vaccine news. If you live, work, or go to school in New Jersey and you're over 16, you're eligible for a shot starting April 19th. Governor Phil Murphy made the announcement this afternoon, and it comes on the heels of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania overall, expanding the list of who can get a shot in the arm. And Delaware is also expanding starting tomorrow. Great news for anyone who is waiting to roll up their sleeve. I'm Shana Humphreys. I'm Jason Martinez, Jeff Cole live at the Camden County Vaccination Center in Blackwood with the briefing coming out of New Jersey and the eligibility expansion in PA. Jeff. Yeah, Jason, uh, Governor Murphy in this state has always been aggressive here. He's been aggressive with testing and certainly aggressive with his aggressive rollout of vaccine of setting up these mass vaccination sites. Six here in the state of New Jersey today, just as the state moves eligibility to 55, he says in two weeks, virtually every adult, in fact, anybody 16 and older can get a shot. Six. The line for a shot snaked from the door to the injection stands in Blackwood Monday. This Camden County run site is expected to up its game this week injecting some 16,500 people up from several thousand the week before. So far, so good. <laughs> it didn't hurt so far. <laughs> George Hamburger was giddy to have his first dose after dodging the virus all year. Well, I was very fearful of getting because I've had three operations this past year, hernia, a tumor, and then a heart operation, so I was lucky I didn't get it. Blackwood will extend its hours to inject the welcome but sudden flood of new vaccine. The extra dose is coming just as the state opens eligibility to those 55 and older. Individuals who have been sitting back and, and saying, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to wait my turn, I'm ready to, ready to go when they call my number, um, they're going to step up, they're going to go on, they're going to book their appointment. 55 and up. I'm somewhat self-interested because that now includes me and my wife. New Jersey's governor, who's made himself the face of his state's COVID fight, says he and his wife will now get a shot as he plans to throw open the vaccine doors. It's April 19th. All New Jerseyans age 16 and over will be eligible for vaccination. That's about 12 days ahead of our initial target that had been May 1st. The Garden State joins Pennsylvania, which also expects to make all adults eligible for a shot by the 19th today. Postal, transit and manufacturing workers became eligible as Pennsylvania moved to the 1B phase. Philadelphia inched into 1C Monday, allowing sanitation, janitorial, utility and postal workers to get in line. A fuller opening comes later in the month. Back in Blackwood, Elizabeth Richardson's relief from having her second shot was muted by the tragic loss of a loved one. My son was killed uh, at the beginning of the virus, so it's been hard because I've been, you know, without family, and so it's been rough. Ms. Richardson said her son was killed in gunfire in North Carolina. She has not been able to travel in two weeks. Now that she's had her second shot of vaccine, she says she will go and visit family and mourn her son's loss. April 19th, here in the Garden State, they throw open the vaccine doors. Live here in Blackwood, Jeff Cole, Fox 29 News, folks. Making progress. Thank you, Jeff. Montgomery and Chester counties are getting folks in phase 1B registered for the COVID vaccine. In Montco, that includes law enforcement, firefighters, grocery store workers, and food and agriculture workers. Chester County sent emails to more than 24,000 people in phase 1B to get them their appointments. They'll have five sites open and three more for seniors in long-term care facilities. 23 more schools in Philadelphia are now cleared for in-person learning. More students in grades 3 to 5 can now go back to class in a hybrid model. Starting tomorrow, families can choose whether they want to send their kids back on the district's learning model selection survey. And starting tomorrow, anyone in Delaware age 16 or older will be eligible for the COVID vaccine. Anyone who wants to go can go to one pharmacy, community vaccination site, or state mass vaccination site. Just register online on the Delaware vaccine website. And for more info on COVID-19 vaccines, you can take out your phone, open up your camera, and point it at that QR code at the bottom left of your screen there. And it'll take you directly to the App Store to download our Fox 29 News app, where you can find out more about vaccine eligibility across 
across our area. And don't go anywhere either because we are going to get uh, ready to just discuss this whole situation with Dr. Oz, talk about vaccine eligibility and expanding when he joins us live coming up at 530. Breaking news right now out of Atlantic County. Sky Fox is live over the 3900 block of Oak Road in Buena Vista Township. We're getting reports that there was a shooting there around 330 this afternoon. No word yet on how the victim is doing. We'll keep you updated as more updates come into the newsroom. All right, let's talk about this gorgeous spring weather. How about this? Last couple mm -hmm. of days have been perfect. Hey, good time to go down the shore, and these people agree here as they uh, take a walk down the boardwalk. Temperature soaring into the upper 60s. And Scott, is it going to be a good night to run some errands or maybe get some ice cream or water ice? Absolutely. Looking pretty good for some water ice temperatures are currently in the upper 60s. Jason, as we focus in outside of our studios, you can see a lot of sunshine and the sun doesn't set until 730. As far as ultimate Doppler, you can see dry, quiet conditions, a lot of sunshine across the entire Delaware Valley. And look at the temperatures right now. Upper 60s, pretty uniform as we move into Wilmington, 69 degrees, 69 in Millville and Atlantic City temperatures. As we move toward the Lehigh Valley right now at 67 degrees in Allentown, Reading, Berks County at 68. So we'll go hour by hour planning your evening. 7 o'clock temperatures right around 68 degrees by 8 o'clock. It stays nice for dining out fresco right around 65 degrees. It's going to be nice at the ballpark as well. 9 o'clock temperatures right around 63 degrees. So overnight tonight, we're talking upper 40s for low temperatures in Philadelphia. And coming up, we'll talk a little bit about a wildfire risk, the pollen problems, and our next best chance for rain. Back to you. Thank you, Scott. Happening now in Delaware County, a desperate search to find a missing pregnant woman and her boyfriend. They were last seen almost a week ago. Kelly Rule is live in Upper Darby where she spoke with the woman's mother. So Kelly, do they have any leads at all tonight? No, they don't, and police do not either. And in fact, tonight, police say they're just truly perplexed by this. Now, they're not calling this case suspicious yet. It's still a missing person case. Meanwhile, Deanna Bryce's mother tells me, yeah, she's just devastated. She wants her daughter home safe. I just need her home. It's been almost a week since Betty Cellini has seen her daughter, 21-year-old Deanna Bryce, and she says every second since has been excruciating. Bring her home. I, I want her to be alive. I want her to be home. Betty says Deanna has a four year old son and is pregnant with her second boy and has a medical condition that requires daily medication she doesn't have. She last saw her wearing this shirt and rainbow flip flops around 1 p.m. Tuesday, March 30th at K Laundry on Church Lane in Lansdowne. Betty says her daughter left the laundromat with her boyfriend and father of her unborn son, Justin Smith, in his 2018 Black Ford Fusion. When she couldn't reach her daughter later that day, she says Justin informed her they got in an argument and she got out of the car in Philadelphia. Betty says Justin also stopped answering his phone around 5 p.m. and she filed a report. About that same time, Upper Darby Police say officers found Justin's Ford Fusion on fire near 59th and Florence Streets in Philly. But police say Deanna and Justin were not seen in or around the car at the time of the fire. This one is has everyone perplexed. It's nothing really makes sense here. The two of them just completely since, like I said, Tuesday, March 30th, have gone off the radar and haven't spoken to anyone. And police say that's unlike them. According to both families, Deanna's mother says her last conversation she had with her daughter, she was crying and upset after a phone conversation with her doctor, but wouldn't go into details. I'm numb. I don't know what to do. All I want is them both found, them both safe. Now, Justin Smith lives in Philadelphia, and police there tell me they do not have a missing, missing person report for him. But Upper Darby Township police say they're working closely with Philadelphia police. They're looking at social media and cell phone data, but so far, they have not had any luck with that. Shana, of course, anybody with information is asked to come forward and call police. Absolutely. All right, Kelly Rule, live for us in Upper Darby. Thank you, Kelly. Police in Cape May County are investigating the death of a three year old girl at a lower township campground. Investigators say the child was pulled out of a septic tank after falling into it around 930 last night. It happened at the Sun Outdoors campground in the Irma section of town. The little girl died at the scene. The exact cause of death hasn't been released yet, but investigators say it does appear to have been an accident.
A Philadelphia teenager is fighting for her life after being shot inside her Kensington home. It happened just after 1030 last night on Roar Street near East Indiana Avenue. The 19 year old victim was shot in the jaw and rushed to Temple Hospital where she is now in critical condition. Police are still looking for the shooter. It is week two of the trial against former police officer Derek Chauvin. Today, the police chief of Minneapolis went on the stand for the prosecution. Fox's Mike Tobin has the latest from Minneapolis. Yes, uh, it, uh, Mr. Chauvin's right there. The murder trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin continued into its second week on Monday. Police Chief Madaria Arredondo testifying on Chauvin's conduct on the day of George Floyd's death last spring. To continue to apply that level of force to a person proned out, handcuffed behind their back, um, that, that in no way, shape, or form is anything that um, uh, is by policy, is not part of our training, and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. Arredondo fired Chauvin the day after Floyd's death, and last summer he called it a murder. Earlier on Monday, the emergency room doctor who pronounced Floyd dead said he believed Floyd died from a lack of oxygen, not a drug overdose or heart attack. I determined that the likelihood of any meaningful outcome was far below 1%, and that we would not be able to resuscitate Mr. Floyd, and so I then pronounced him dead. And doctor, is there another name for death by oxygen deficiency? Asphyxia is a commonly understood term. The trial of Derek Chauvin is expected to take three more weeks. In Minneapolis, Mike Tobin, Fox News. A SEPTA station that's been at the center of security and safety issues is back open tonight. We'll tell you what commuters can expect to see. As the weather warms up, the dreaded spotted lantern fly is coming back. But there's a new push on to send the pests packing. Good news for SEPTA riders. The Somerset station on the Market Frankfurt line in Kensington is back open today. It comes after SEPTA shut it down for two weeks to fix safety, security, and some infrastructure issues. The Allegheny station will also receive some similar improvements. SEPTA says 60 security guards will be added to the Market Frankfurt line because of recent shootings and attacks, and there will be more transit police at the stations. And good news for drivers, too. PennDOT's pothole patrols will be out this week in more than 60 state highways across our area. In Philadelphia, Delco, Montco, and Chester County, dozens of roads will be fixed, including Route 1, I-95, I-476, and local roads connecting those highways. In Bucks County, Routes 313 and 663, as well as uh, Mincy Trail, will be repaired. Remember, if you're looking for work to be done or want to know where it's going to be done near you, you can right there go to that website. Now, speaking of roads, now President Biden is talking infrastructure in his Easter remarks in his next big project, but lawmakers are divided. Fox's Ray Bogan has more. President Biden and the First Lady taking a moment to deliver an Easter message at the White House, saying there is hope even in the midst of a pandemic. We will rebuild our nation. We will re-engage and reimagine what we can be. The president's remarks hinting at his multi-trillion dollar infrastructure bill that he wants passed by Congress. As the bill exists today, it needs to be changed. This bill will not be in the same form you've seen it introduced. In a radio interview, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says the nation is overdue for an infrastructure overhaul, but says the president's plan for paying for it with a 28 percent corporate tax is way too high and should be closer to 25 percent. But the president doubled down in defense of his plan, addressing the topic head on during his return to the White House this afternoon. I'm going to push as hard as I can to change the circumstance so we can compete with the rest of the world. So we fully expect that from Senator Manchin and other members, and we expect uh, the question of how to pay for the package, if we should pay for the package, to be part of the discussion moving forward. Republicans are also pushing for the bill to be recrafted. There's a way to do infrastructure without charging it or completely reversing the tax policy that every single one of my members believed was in the best interest of the country. Senator Manchin says there are at least six other Democrats who disagree with President Biden's corporate tax proposal. And to get this bill through the Senate, 
the president will need all Democrats on board. Ray Bogan, Fox News. Montgomery County Commissioner Valerie Arkush is running for U.S. Senate. She's got her eye on the seat soon to be left open by Republican Senator Pat Toomey. Dr. Arkush has been a familiar face to many in our area. The Democrat has led the county's COVID-19 response team for the past year. She will join a crowded field of candidates that's been growing since Toomey announced he will not seek re-election. Other Democratic candidates include Pennsylvania's Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman and State Senator Malcolm Kenyatta from Philadelphia. President Biden is celebrating the continued rollout of the COVID vaccine, but health officials are warning people not to let their guards down as we could be facing a fourth surge. Fox's David Lee Miller has the latest from New York City. As we celebrate renewal this season, we know that long before dawn is almost here. President Biden marking a year of COVID casualties during a special address, but also offering hope for a return to normalcy. The U.S. is now averaging more than 3.1 million vaccine shots every day, and the program is still accelerating. But new cases are also on the rise, more than 64,000 per day on average, up from 54,000 last week. Health officials now say we're on the verge of a fourth surge, and it could be hitting younger Americans harder. We are learning that many outbreaks in young people are related to youth sports and extracurricular activities. The spread of new COVID variants is helping to push case numbers up more quickly. The NIH says vaccines should be effective against these new strains, but they're also seeing a growing number of infections happening between the first and second shots. When you just leave it at one dose, the question is, how long does it last? And when you're dealing with variants, you're in a tenuous zone. Despite the threat of a new surge, a number of states are moving ahead with reopening plans, including easing restrictions at nursing homes, now that three quarters of seniors have gotten at least one vaccine shot. And nothing compares to seeing a loved one up close. And so that's been really the most um, invigorating and, and happy moment. There is new guidance on disinfecting surfaces. The CDC says cleaning once a day is enough to kill the virus. In New York, David Lee Miller, Fox News. Chosen 300 ministries were out vaccinating the homeless and some of their volunteers today in West Philadelphia. The ministry partnered with Sayer Health to offer the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The group says they want to give the homeless and those less fortunate the single dose vaccine. It's very difficult to get a person vaccinated once and get them to a second appointment. If we can get it once and done, uh, get the vaccine in them and help them be able to uh, live a healthy life, uh, that's our goal today. Well, the group says they vaccinated between 30 and 40 people today. I'll take a look at this. Skyfox over what was left of a brush fire in Camden County this afternoon. This is the 1600 block of Boulevard Avenue in Pensacon Township. And you see crews there working to put out some of those hot spots right next to the train tracks. No word on if anybody was hurt. But let's bring in Scott now here because there is brush fire risk right now. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. We're talking about low relative humidity values, rising temperatures, and tender dry conditions. In fact, tomorrow we do have an elevated risk for some wildfire concerns across the Delaware Valley. You can see all of Delaware, South Jersey, and southeastern Pennsylvania. Winds tomorrow will be gusting 20 to 25 miles per hour, low humidity, anywhere from 20 to about 30 percent during the afternoon, and temperatures We'll be topping out in the 60s, even a few low 70s. In fact, we're talking about cloud cover giving way to sunshine during the day tomorrow. It's going to stay dry and those temperatures will be above average. The wind, it will start to pick up pretty quiet tomorrow morning. But by the afternoon, we're looking at winds gusting anywhere from 20 to about 25 miles per hour. The overall forecast for tomorrow, temperatures 71 degrees in Philadelphia, upper 60s toward the Lehigh Valley and mid to upper 60s down the shore. We'll talk about the pollen problems and our next best chance for some rainfall with that seven day coming up. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Scott. It's supposed to be the happiest place on earth, but not for this guy. His visit to Disney ended in handcuffs. And quite the scene at a St. Louis jail where inmates smashed windows and set fires. We'll tell you what they're demanding. Put your hands on your back, sir. 
you refuse to leave after being told to do so. Okay, so that's a man being arrested at Disney Springs in Florida for refusing a temperature check. This was caught on camera back in February. Deputies just releasing this body cam footage today. The man went on to complain that he paid too much money for his Disney vacation to be arrested. Now, we're also told the deputies say the man said he would get a temperature check, but that was after he was already arrested. And they're back. The spotted lanternfly has returned, and some politicians are doing what they can to help contain them. U.S. Representative Chrissy Houlihan announced a national multi-million dollar project to research to control the bugs. Houlihan spoke today in Kennett Square to remind everyone that while you may think the bugs are pretty, they are an invasive species. Lanternflies feed on crops that are grown in our area, and they're very destructive and can be detrimental to small businesses. A failed attempt to contain these insects will translate to a loss of product and subsequent income for people like Kent here. So after the year of 2020 and the economic de devastation that the pandemic has caused, we need to do everything in our power as leaders to make it as easy as possible for our small businesses to thrive. And that includes thinking about the spotted lanternfly. Researchers at Penn State say the spotted lanternfly could cost the state up to $324 million a year and 2,800 jobs. More people across our area are now eligible to get a shot in the arm, and Dr. Oz joins us live to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Today's top headline in your health news, vaccine eligibility increased today in Philadelphia, the rest of Pennsylvania, and in New Jersey, and it's Delaware's turn tomorrow. You can find out if it's your turn to make an appointment for a vaccine on fox29.com. And Dr. Oz joins us live now to talk about this bump in vaccine eligibility. And Dr. Oz, we know you lived here in Philadelphia, so how crucial is it that more people are now able to receive a shot in the arm? I'm actually in Philadelphia right now. This is, this is my home studio, so where you can tell. Uh, people are excited, and for good reason. You know, I, it was always a problem early on because there was a pecking order of who got the vaccine. That actually slowed down vaccination because people had to confirm it was your turn next. Uh, I think this is fantastic because it just opens it up. And just get online, yeah, you know, doesn't, whether it's today, next week, the week after, eventually your turn will come. I'm pretty confident that by May 1st, within a month, uh, most people who want to get vaccinated will be online. They might not have gotten their shot yet, but they'll be online to get it. Uh, you know how to hack systems, you know, get a, keep, uh, keep auto dialing. Uh, I've got a whole set of tricks on my website, all legit, of how to get on the line more rapidly and not get dismayed by uh, whatever uh, call waiting is, uh, is, is in store for you, because yes, there's going to be a lot of people reaching out. That stated, that the tri-state area vaccinated will be a huge advance. About a, roughly 25% of the country is already vaccinated, and the main group that needed to be vaccinated has gotten it, which are the older folks. Now it's time for the rest of the country who wants to be safe to get their vaccination. Yeah, so Dr. Oz, this expansion of eligibility, what do you think it means for us short term and long term as far as summer gatherings and that, you know, that all important herd immunity? It means you can go to the Jersey Shore and go indoors if you want to get out of the heat. It means you can travel in an airplane. CDC just changed guidance now saying you can travel and there's no quarantine if you've been vaccinated. I think we've undersold the benefits of vaccination for too long in an effort to be conservative. But once you get everyone online and people aren't mad that they didn't get their shot yet, they can enjoy life like everybody else. I think the country is going to rapidly open up. I will bet you by July 4th, half of indoor dining will be open. Might be more in some places. We'll open up in the indoor theater theaters to get half capacity, but other activities like outdoor go to Phillies game, there shouldn't be a limit. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Texas Rangers right now having their opening day, 40,000 fans in the seats, uh, no restrictions at all. So if you're vaccinated, then Dr. Oz, you have the, the full ability to travel like it's 2019. Then I know you mentioned the uh, CDC revised guidance. Well, not quite. You do have to wear a mask. You have to socially distance. You want to be thoughtful about it. And the CDC says, you know, don't try to travel. But if you want to go see relatives you've got seen in a while, if you've got an important business trip, you can get on a plane. The chance of you getting sick is very low. The chance of you getting sick and dying is almost zero. In fact, it was zero in the clinical trials. And now we have data that the chance of you passing it to others is just about 90, less than 90% of what it was. So it's good. It's all encouraging. A lot to look forward to. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Oz. Well, you can get a full hour of Dr. Oz each weekday afternoon at 2 o'clock right here on Fox 29.
And let's get to your Fox 29 weather authority. You know, Dr. Oz is loving this weather. That's why he's here in Philly right now. Let's take a look outside, too. Look at the cherry blossoms Gorgeous. lining Columbus Boulevard near Dock Street there. Perfect weather to go out and see them. You might want to, uh, you know, you might need a mask not just for uh, COVID, but maybe for the, for the pollen out there. Oh, it's blowing, isn't it? Scott has your forecast in 15 seconds. It's that time of year again. How can we help? I mean, could you haul this away for me? Oh, it's gone. There was stuff here. Amazing. When you want junk to disappear, all you have to do is point. Yeah, Jason, there is always a trade-off. Of course, we have the warmer temperatures, but everything is blooming. So the pollen levels, they are going sky high. We'll talk about that coming up. But let's talk about the nice weather, dry conditions as we look at ultimate Doppler. High pressure has still been really dominating our weather pattern temperatures today have made it into the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. It's going to be nice stepping outdoors this evening, maybe dining out fresco as well. In fact, look at the temperatures right now. It's upper 60s in Redding, 69 degrees in Wilmington, 69 a popular number as we move into Dover, Millville, as well as Atlantic City, 69 in Wrightstown as well. So by 7 o'clock, we're still looking at temperatures upper 60s, low to mid 60s by the 8 and 9 o'clock hour with Fair skies and the wind will start to diminish overnight tonight. Those temperatures looking pretty good as well. Upper 30, so a little chilly as we move toward the Lehigh Valley and the Poconos temperatures, though, mainly in the mid to upper 40s for Delaware, South Jersey, Philadelphia. We will go 48 degrees for the overnight low temperature. A little disturbance will be moving through overnight tonight. First thing tomorrow morning with mostly cloudy skies, but the cloud cover will give way to a lot of sunshine and those temperatures. They will respond pretty nicely. We're looking at temperatures close to 60 degrees by one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Upper 60s to low 70s will pretty much be the rule across the region tomorrow afternoon. 70 degrees Westchester, Chester County tomorrow. Delco media 71 degrees looking good. Montgomery Ambler County right around 70 degrees for the afternoon high temperature. 68 in the Lehigh Valley tomorrow. 69 in Pottstown will go 72 degrees in Redding temperatures for Wilmington, Delaware right around 71 degrees. It looks a little unsettled as we move toward the end of the week and approach the upcoming weekend. Friday, maybe a couple of spotty showers, but better chances as we get towards Saturday afternoon. You can see around lunchtime looking at a couple of scattered showers across the region. And then as we move towards Sunday, we'll keep things unsettled as well and cooler temperatures by that time frame. But in the meantime, temperatures upper 60s, low 70s right through your Thursday, and then as we move toward Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even next week, temperatures a little cooler back into the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees. It looks a little unsettled as far as the, the sky conditions, but we are talking about scattered showers, not a complete washout through that time frame. Guys, coming up, we'll talk much more about the troubling pollen impacting me as well right now. Mm. Back to you. <laughs> All right, Scott, thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Thinking about packing up the kids and the car for a family road trip? You might want to check your wallet first because we're talking pain at the pump. This is the best thing. I was alive, right? That was a blessing. Tonight on Fox 29 News at 10. This is a lingering issue that I deal with every day. I'm Seanette Wilson in Bucks County. Are lingering post-COVID symptoms affecting your daily life in the way of parenting or working? I got multiple phone calls of people that were diagnosed clear of COVID and still having symptoms. A Newtown doctor may have a solution. Bucks County will have the latest tonight. People in Florida are on high alert after a leak at a processing plant. Three counties near Tampa are all under a state of emergency. We're told crews are working swiftly to contain the leaking reservoir, but there is growing concern it could collapse and then flood the area with millions of gallons of polluted water. If we should have a full breach within minutes, we're down to about 340 million gallons that could breach in totality in a period of, of minutes and the models for less than an hour are as high of a 20 foot wall of water. Florida's governor says if needed, the state will deploy all necessary resources for anyone impacted. 
Philadelphia City Commissioner Omar Sabir is in Jackson, Mississippi to help with their water shortage issues. It's part of a humanitarian mission. The commissioner donated a truckload of water to the city. Jackson's been without water for more than a month now. Sabir says that he will help distribute that water to the community as supplies run low. Before he left, he held a press conference there at PHL to talk about the effort. Water is something that we take for granted. And they need $2 billion of infrastructure repairs. That's why it's so uh, great to have uh, the president uh, speaking out about infrastructure. Well, Commissioner Sabir says that access to fresh drinking water is a human right. Still to come at 5 o'clock, gun sales are soaring throughout the country, especially in our area. And you may be surprised to learn who's buying them. And hello, Kristen. What's coming up in sports? Hey, Jason and Shayna. Well, the Phillies got out to an amazing start this opening weekend, but things get a little tougher thanks to the Mets scheduling. How things change for the Phillies now. Next. It broke out last night at a St. Louis jail, and as the scene unfolded and police shut down surrounding streets, prisoners could be heard demanding things like court dates for their criminal proceedings. COVID-19 has caused significant delays to the court system. This jail is actually known for frequent inmate uprising. It was back in February where 100 prisoners were part of an incident that sent a corrections officer to the hospital. Gun sales are soaring around the country, especially in our area, and many of those buyers are apparently women. Fox 29 photojournalist Bill Rohr caught up with a few as they learn how to use their new firearms. At Bob's little sports shop in Glassboro, New Jersey, gun sales are booming. It's been kind of insane for the last year. We're doing probably between 20 and 50 background checks a day. On a normal year, this time of year, if we did 5 to 12, that was a good day. Wayne Biden's business took off last February at the start of the pandemic. Of course, they started talking about locking people down, closing businesses, closing schools. Uh, people started getting afraid. He says fear is fueling the upswing in sales. I have never picked up a gun in my life. I'm 70 years old, yes. Okay, so you're going to look through here. The world's changing, and I have to change with it. Here we go. Ready? Sandy is here to learn. I want to get people comfortable enough with their gun so that they can use it in a, in a home defense type situation. So finish your grip. Dave Olivier is an experienced firearms instructor, a former Marine, and served on the police force for 10 years. But you want to use this hand and kind of line it he up. He started teaching after interest from a post on his Facebook page. A lot of people are going out and buying guns. You know, if you're one of those people who did go out and buy a gun and it's now in your basement, wrapped in a Kmart bag under the lawn chairs, you might want to reach out to me because that's not really where you want the gun. Nice, drop an empty magazine. In order for Sandy to purchase a gun from a federal licensed dealer in New Jersey, Wayne will do a state and federal background check through the National Incident Criminal Background Check System. The FBI has been keeping stats on them since 1998. According to their data, over 12.5 million checks have been done this year across the country, a 35% increase over this time last year. This is like our favorite class to teach. Over in Pennsylvania, women are filling classrooms. We'll set up a malfunction in your gun that you brought if we have the right caliber snap cap. Aaron O'Donnell is head of the Girl in a Gun Montgomery County chapter. Most people who don't like guns, it's because they're afraid of them. They're fearful. They only know bad things with guns, but there is so much more. I look at it as it's a tool. It's just another tool for the toolbox. So dry fire. Erin bought a gun several years ago. Yep. She says a gun makes her feel less vulnerable. After a while, she became more comfortable and began to shoot competitively. Eventually, she started teaching her own classes. Line up your sights. It's a completely different environment. Turn the bag. When it's women teaching women. I have had tons of women tell me repeatedly, they tell me all the time, uh, I would have never stepped foot on in this building if, I, if it weren't for you. Bring the gun in. Aaron says women have the tendencies of being more patient and soft-spoken with students. No one judges you. So whatever skill level you are, it doesn't matter. Like, there's always someone there to, to help you, you know, better your skills. No one's laughing at you. Yeah, around that way. Savannah brought her 15-year-old daughter to class. The experience has brought them closer together. At first, I didn't really want to go. 
But then um, we went the first time because she dragged me here. <laughs> um, I kind of liked it. Go ahead and take some out. You have similar interests. It's so much better to start a conversation. So I think personally it has been much better between us. Good job. Back in New Jersey, Sandy has just about finished up with her lesson. I feel proud of myself. Most people feel empowered when they leave the rain. For Sandy, she's more comfortable. I feel like I know how to manage it and handle it without shooting my foot off, okay? <laughs> in Glassboro, Bill Rohr, Fox 29 News. Let's talk about your money now and information from more than 500 million Facebook users has been found on a website for hackers. Now, that's according to a Business Insider report. The data breach reportedly happened two years ago and includes users in at least 100 countries. It includes their phone numbers, Facebook IDs, full names, locations, birthdays and email addresses. Facebook says the problem has been fixed. Are you planning a road trip as the weather gets warmer? Get ready for some painful prices at the pump. The average cost of a gallon of regular gas is 287. That's about a dollar higher than this time last year. This is all according to the gas price tracking app Gas Buddy. Prices are expected to keep rising as more people hit the road for the summer. Time for sports now and uh, let's talk to Kristen. What's going on, Phillies? <laughs> Yes, hey Jason and Shayna, the Phillies put together an incredible opening weekend, but now because of COVID-19 issues for the Nationals, the Mets had to change their schedule. So tonight is the Mets opening day against the Phillies. The scheduling changes means that the Phillies now get the top three pitchers in the Mets starting rotation. And tonight that means Jacob deGrom. Joe Girardi discussed aside from the pitching changes, how they approach this series against the Mets. Maybe how they use Lindor or maybe they use certain bullpen pieces it might be different where Lindor hits in the lineup versus a right-hander or left-hander. But I mean, they are who, you know, they were. Um, and it's really not, there's not going to be a lot of information that goes in this can change things. The Flyers get back on the ice tonight for the first of two back-to-back -back games against the Bruins. And there's no other way to put it. This Flyers team has been struggling. So they know the, the sense of urgency that they have to bring and hopefully a win tonight. This is playoff hockey for us. Uh, this is a playoff game, uh, the importance of it. Uh, we're very aware. Uh, we talked about embracing the, the challenge in front of us and uh, <clears throat> needing to, to bring our best game tonight. Sam Darnold is reportedly headed to the Panthers. The Jets reportedly trading Darnold to Carolina for three picks, a sixth round pick in this year's draft, and a second and a fourth round pick in next year's draft. How things have changed since the Jets drafted Darnold three overall in 2018. And Gonzaga is looking to end their perfect season with a national championship later tonight. It's two one seeds in Baylor and Gonzaga, and the Bulldogs know what kind of challenge Baylor is going to bring. They're complete. They they guard their yard defensively. Uh, they're very handsy on defense. They make the right reads and ball screens and off penetration, uh, and obviously shoot the ball really well. I mean, I, I mean, I I, I hope or think maybe it's like, it's a little bit like preparing for uh, my guards. And tip off is a late one, nine twenty. But this one, Jason and Shayna, is for all the marbles. And it's going to be hard to top that last one against UCLA with that buzzer beater. All right, uh, Kristen, thank Ooh, you very much. Oh, yeah. Who can and can't play women's sports is now a subject of controversy in Pennsylvania. Today, five female state representatives introduced a bill that would block anyone not assigned the gender of female at birth from playing on women's teams. The bill is called the Fairness in Women's Sports Act. The lawmakers say the bill protects fairness and equal opportunities for girls and women. And we think that this order violate, violates Title IX and reverses nearly 50 years of advances for women. There is never a bad time to protect opportunities for girls and women who deserve to compete on a level playing field. Opponents of the bill say it's a direct attack on transgender rights. Time to check in with your Fox 29 Weather Authority. We're starting with a live look outside in Doylestown. Are you all itchy, sneezy, sniffly today? If so, join the club. You are not alone. Scott, everything is blooming and it's beautiful to see all the trees just exploding in color, but it's kind of wreaking havoc on allergy sufferers as well. 
Yeah, it really is, Shana. I mean, we're talking about that trade-off, the nice weather, lots of sunshine temperatures today made it to 70 degrees. We'll take a live look outside of our studios at 4th and Market. Yeah, looks can be deceiving because the pollen levels, they are really through the roof. They're typically highest during the pre-dawn hours and the morning time frame. And then again, as we move toward the dusk time frame. But take a look at Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, in the high category, the main culprits are juniper, maple, as well as some of those weeds with the dandelion kind of blooming across the region and also the wind. It has been kind of gusty today. We still have those winds gusting 20 to 30 miles an hour, just really blowing that pollen everywhere. So let's talk about some relief. We do have some rainfall chances, especially as we get toward the end of the week, the upcoming weekend. That will actually help kind of wash some of that pollen away. As we look at that forecast for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, temperatures will be a little cooler as well. Upper 50s to right around 60 degrees with some of those scattered showers once again providing some relief. But in the meantime, just kind of guard yourself uh, against uh, the high pollen that we're seeing right now. Jason and Shana, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Scott. So how many of you out there love Super Mario Brothers, the original? Yeah, it's a classic, right? Well, a mint condition copy of the game from 1986 just sold for $660,000 at a Dallas auction. Yeah, it was bought as a Christmas gift and placed in a desk drawer, and apparently the game had been forgotten about and just sat there until earlier this year, so it's, it's perfect, never really been wow. open. The auction house says the price reflected the game's limited number uh, and the rarity of an unopened game. Wow, check your drawers. Well, he served our country with pride, and now this disabled veteran and his family have a new place to call home. Fox 29 News in HD is sponsored by X1 from Xfinity, changing the way you experience TV. An Army veteran and his family moved into a new smart home thanks to a big donation. It's a home built with the labor and love of dozens of businesses and donors. The Minnesota veteran was injured while fighting in Afghanistan, so the Tunnel to Towers Foundation built this custom house for Army Specialist John Mullen and his family. Every room inside is wheelchair accessible, and Mullen can do things like cook directly at the stove. There's smart technology throughout the house. But the fact that they are, they're taking it to the next level and, and um, wanting to make sure that um, it's not just about accessibility, but it's about having features that also will uh, allow for easier, um, I guess, living. And he is not the only one. This foundation is helping police officers, firefighters, and other veterans move into 120 new homes all across the country. Love that. That does it today for us at Fox 29 News at 5. The 6 starts right now. A mystery in Delaware County. A 21-year-old pregnant mom goes missing. Her boyfriend vanishes without a trace, too. Hear from her mother, who is desperate for answers, coming up. Big news out of the Garden State when everyone 16 and older will be eligible to roll up their sleeve and get a shot in the arm. And if you don't live in Jersey, don't worry. In Delaware and Pennsylvania, more people are becoming eligible.